Hi Nick, thank you very much for taking part in the Business Spotlight series. Uh, I know a little bit about what you do, but I'm looking forward to finding out more. So I'm going to pass it over to you to introduce yourself and what you do. Um, thanks Ed. So I am Nick Marks. I am a statistician by trade and I measure happiness, people's experience of life. And my business basically does that with teams like how happy are teams with the very simple idea that a happy team is a successful team. Fantastic. How long have you done that for? Um, so the work on work for about the last uh, decade and previously before that, I used to work in public policy. So I worked in a think tank like promoting why government should measure well-being. Hmm. Um, yeah, very interesting. So, um, in terms of the, the types of people you work with, is it sort of large corporates, small companies? So we tend to focus on SMEs. So you know our largest client has been a few thousand people, but predominantly we work in the space of fifty to five hundred people in the organisation. It's not a problem to do bigger, but we marketing is very dear, bit difficult for bigger organisations. Yeah. So and procurement processes. <laughs> <laughs> understandable yes and in terms of then like so you said you go and assess the happiness how many people in the company do you tend to, to look at or survey if that makes sense oh so we do everybody because the idea really is we're built from the bottom up so the idea is instead of to do a sort of so when i worked in in public policy it was obviously population surveys you're looking at sampling techniques but with an organization you can measure the whole system and um and of course what you really want to do is know how teams are doing very regularly so we measure every week we just ask people a very simple question how happy were you at work this week and out of that comes an extraordinary time trend that basically picks the ups and downs picks up the ups and downs of work which we all have bad weeks it's just trying not to have too many of them mm. yeah no i think our founders i think are saying of, you, can have, you can have a bad half an hour trying to have a bad day yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. and so, so tell me a bit more about the work you do then so once you actually assess that do you then go in yourself and give them a little bit of advice on how to, to become happier? No, we, well, we, we do give advice on that, but we're basically a software tool. So basically software service, um, you know, model. So we sell a subscription, which is basically the whole uh, process of sending the questionnaire out um, and, and analyzing it. It's all done, all done with algorithms. Hmm. So, um, and then I, I create a sort of training platform internally in the product so people can learn more about happiness, learn more about how to build a happy and successful team. So, um, so it's very standalone um, as in, um, you know, we're not trying to sell consultancy. Obviously I sometimes sell talks and workshops, but that's not the main part of the business. Yeah, that makes sense. And more, more scalable that way, too, is yes. my view. So um, in terms of the obviously you've been doing it for a while, what was the impact of, of COVID on the business? Oh, so COVID. So we'd only launched the, the, the product we now only sell called Friday Pulse. In fact, we changed our company name to the, the name of the product. Um, we only launched that in 2019 maybe right at the back end of 2018. We did, we did some. So um, COVID was pretty difficult for us because no one wanted to buy anything everything was up in the air so we what we introduced was a was a was a long free trial so that we could basically hopefully get people onto the platform hmm. um, and then convert those at the end of the trial so we started offering a three-month free trial we now just offer one month one but that was our way of trying to help people who didn't really know what they wanted to do and and actually I think that's still a little lingering there now I think people are still thinking about quite what they want to do in this space yeah hmm. yeah and I, I mean I, I'd imagine as well there might be some some shifts that people are perhaps have, have had challenges in terms of the happiness levels through COVID it was a strange time for a lot of people and I've certainly spoken to some other business businesses in, in that area where they said they've seen increased challenges for people after COVID it COVID has disrupted a lot so yeah there was this short-term impact of the lockdowns which were pretty brutal um, most of our so if you look at the data on UK happiness, there's a really good weekly survey by YouGov called the mm -hmm. mood of the nation. And, and you can see the ups and downs, you know, going through COVID, which make perfect sense, really. Our clients had a big dip as COVID struck. So the clients that we had then, we saw them all dip, but then they, they really adjusted pretty well because they mm -hmm. were on top of it all the time. So they, and, you know, they, they actually knew the impact of COVID on the happiness stuff because they've been measuring before so 
in that way, I think our clients rode it out better than the mm. national average, much better. We find we know that they score above the national average for happiness anyway, because who you know, if you're going to be progressive enough to measure happiness, you're probably thinking about it more. Yeah, yeah. So, once you start to measure something, you can you can work on it. If you don't absolutely, it, you, you can't do much with it. So yeah, excellent. Yeah. And um, I get, as you say, probably quite apt for just now as well with the different challenges in in the economy. So that's something people to have a look at as well. And for for the business what's what are the aspirations for the next five years um so we we've decided we're going to call ourselves a scale up now rather than a startup um <laughs> we've had enough time starting up so really it's about it's about he helping people get to know what we do because we are obviously on the edge of what's happening in this in the area of, of staff surveys you know we're, we're always on weekly uh, we're around happiness, which a lot of people aren't ready to embrace. You know, they're they're tipping dipping their toes in with well-being, but they don't really know what it means. You know, they know engagement is a little stale as an idea, so they're looking for something new. So, so we we just really need to just be promoting the message. So that's why I'm writing the book. You know, to for the overall message, um, and and get more word of mouth because we've got some very happy clients. I think the difficulty, I'm sure, is with every scale up is how do you how do you get other people to hear about you you know particularly in a crowded market like we're in hmm. i was just about to say to you what, what are the challenges but i guess that's that is that the main one there sort of growing growing the business and getting people to, to find out what you do and how it can help them yes absolutely I, I think people don't think enough about what a staff survey can or can't do for them you know annual surveys are are boring they're out of date as soon as they're they're published they're too much detail which actually means people don't see in, in statistics, we have this thing called the signal and the noise. If you get lost in the noise, you never notice the signal. And I think it's being very clear with your statistics. That's something that, you know, I did with my my government work and, and with this work is like, how can you be? Well, I say it's simple without simplest being simplistic. You know, you've got to basically create that signal that things are going well or not in a very clear statistical way. And then you've got to give clues about what they can do about it. So we're very focused on that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, really interesting. I'm so we're big, big believers in test and measuring here, so yeah, I yeah. can relate to that. And it's been obviously an interesting time since 2019, as we talked about. What would you say has been the biggest learning for you as a business owner? Um, <laughs> um, the difficulty of recruitment, um, in the sense that, um, you know, uh, I, I probably, I'm quite an enthusiastic, optimistic person. I think a lot of founders probably are. I think you have to be. And what I actually need are people who are different than me, who are grounded and executors and very detail oriented. I'm not I'm not detail oriented, but I'm quite you know, in the vision about what we do. I mean, statistically, I go right into the detail, but, you know, the detail of running a business I, I, is not my forte. So it's actually recruiting and finding the right people to do that um, mm. and not just liking them. I'm 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 quite good at recruiting people I like, and I, I don't want to not like the person, but it's more like I've got to think beyond that to actually what they're offering. So I think that's the hardest thing I've had as a founder is how to recruit well. Yeah, no, that, that's that's definitely a thing that other people have experienced too. And yeah. Again, yeah. I'm sure you you'll know probably better than me even, but there's lots of research showing we we often hire people that are like us. So uh, yeah, you can can relate to that. Yeah, I should re remind myself of some of that research. Yes. <laughs> what well, what was it that inspired you to to get into the, the field you're in and, and look into happiness uh i mean it it's been a long life journey but really into quite a philosophical question really is actually what makes life worthwhile and but because i'm a statistician i've always approached that from a statistical perspective so you know i did done big alternative indicators to gdp saying that you need to measure the well-being the welfare of a nation differently and so I think that's always been the driver for me. Um, I did when I was young train as a therapist and my mother was a family therapist. And so I had this kind of unusual mix of that sort of soft people understanding and the, and the data. So in the end, I become the guy that does the data around happiness, but it wasn't planned like that. <laughs> <laughs> Super. And um yeah, it's, it's always it's always good to be a mixture, but equally you get a funny conflict, don't you? So it's, yeah. Okay. um i think as, as a sort of final thing is there any news or any offer you'd like to extend to the audience yeah so we have a um we have two, two offerings one is there's a free happiness at work checkup that you can do 
So you can go to our website and just click on the one that says happiness test or go straight to um, domainfriday1.com and that will take you to it. The other is that we have a free team offering, which is that for teams up to 11 people, and it's 11 rather than 10 because that's the size of a football team. And I, for me, that's the biggest team you can have is 11 people. When it goes to rugby or American football, you split into two teams, you know, forwards and backs mm -hmm. or offense and defense. Whatever. So so it's for 11 people. And that's that, that's in perpetuity, if that's the way we're saying, you know, that we're not planning on on ever making that a charge for product for 11 people. So people can use that. They, they do need a demo because we've just found that people don't start well. We're not. We are a straightforward product, but you have to have the right philosophy with using us. So it's not just a click and you can use it with your team and all things are going to go magically. It's a little bit more that actually you've got to think, right, I've got to commit to, and we call our process measure, meet, repeat. So you measure on a Friday, you meet on a Monday and you do that again. And so um, you've got to commit to that process if it's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, that's great. Thank you very much for, for extending that. And I'm sure some people will definitely want to check that out and, and start measuring things and get, start getting happier. So Yeah, um, thanks. And all the details on fridaypulse.com. Yeah, thanks. Perfect. Look, thanks very much, Nick. It's great to find out about what you do and uh, look forward to, to seeing the developments as they come. Thanks very much. Look forward to seeing the book too. Yeah, when, it, when I got it done. <laughs> <laughs> thanks.